Elon Musk has given us an update on the Cybertruck. And I've been waiting for an update since 2019. You know what happened in 2019, Will? Go ahead. The Coroni? <laughs> hey! That's how long ago it's been. Remember yesterday you made the sound effect? You went... Uh -huh. Remember that? That's what 2022 feels like when you think about when the cyber, when you first saw the Cybertruck, how different it was. Mm. Uh, how different times were. There are no words. It's crazy, man. Yeah. 2019. Anyway, I remember giving 500 bucks or whatever it was and just thinking, this thing is so crazy. This truck is so crazy. I remember them talking about the prices and saying... I was going to start at like 50 grand or whatever and just thinking, that's so ambitious. How's that going to happen? Obviously, the order page has changed since then. What happens if you click order now? What does? What are the options it gives you? you, just, you they just want 150 bucks. They don't even ask what you're ordering. But yeah. back when I gave them the deposit, they actually wanted to know, are you getting the... The build. Well, not the whole build, but just which, which uh, setup you wanted for like a dual motor or whatever it was right. you give you you had there was preference i think it said whatever the estimates were for delivery if you were getting the more premium model it was coming faster type thing but of course in the meantime ford has put out the lightning it's an actual thing that exists i see it in the wild mm. and they plan on delivering 150,000 150,000 units next year something along those lines uh, obviously, Rivian is a thing that exists now. Like, so much has mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. 150,000 F-150 Lightnings in 2023. That's what Ford says it plans to make. And so the, the landscape has moved a little bit, but Elon has finally provided some kind of an update. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has said that the company hopes to start delivering the Cybertruck the middle of next year. This was on a recent investor's call. And it is the most specific timeline that musk has given in a while it doesn't have like hopefully associated with it does it mm -hmm. and it's just middle of next year which is good which i'm happy about it. some some level of specificness yeah. specificity um apparently there's been some slowdowns one of which was the the windshield wiper fiasco mm. i don't know if you remember they're like, how do we do a cool windshield wiper? What do you mean we have to have windshield wipers? Yeah. And we talked about it on this show how it kind of sucks from a design perspective that you have to make this thing look more like a normal car. But then you start to think about it. You're like, yeah, of course it has to have normal car things because you have to drive it. Mm -hmm. So the wiper is one thing. The mirrors is another thing. And it just can't be as futuristic as the initial uh, version that we saw at the event. I mean, even on the website, you still don't have any mirrors. You still don't have any wipers, even on the website when you order it. And you have those warthog halo wheels mm -hmm. or hubcaps or whatever they are. At some point, they're going to have to update that with what it's actually going to look like. But I think they know that people who have ordered this thing don't care. They'll just take it. Yeah. Whatever it ends up shipping looking like, they'll just take it. But anyway, apparently there's some complication that arose around that wiper. It's a single unit that goes back and forth. You obviously had uh, COVID shutdowns and things like that and other shortages and that have slowed things down, which suck. We have had our fair share of spy shots and things like this. Um, but now we have a date. So middle of next year, we're going to see the Cybertruck, according to Elon Musk. Cool. That's the word at the moment. Now, uh, getting back to this Galaxy Unpacked event that's coming up August 10th, 9 a.m. Eastern. I don't know if we're going to be doing something. Hopefully we're doing something. Uh, there was a little portion of uh, the article the last time I talked about it mentioning pre-ordering what they're going to put out, but not knowing what it was and being incentivized to do so, which is an unusual approach. However... I may be good for some people if they know they're going to get it. You get a $200 Samsung credit if you do this pre-order right now. Now that you could use towards a Galaxy Watch, Galaxy Buds, and the smartphone itself 
reserve one, two, or three to save even more. I don't know how this is all going to break down, but yeah, I guess you reserve all to unlock the $200 credit. And once you find out what the prices of these things are, and that's going to cost you some money there, Will. They're still, they're not bothered by it. But if you, like I said, if you knew you were going to get this whole ecosystem of products, now uh, you can get something back. And this website is live right now. All you need to do is put in your first name, last name, email, and optional uh, phone number and click reserve. And that's it. It's a, I guess it's that, that counts. I don't know when they ask you for a credit card. But anyway, uh, alongside this web page, there's a couple of videos that are showcased, which kind of have, I don't know that I would go to the extent of calling them cryptic, but they're sort of showcasing some of the features to expect or, well, I mean, they're definitely uncovering the methods by which Samsung plans on promoting these upcoming products. Now, the first video, which you can click over to, ready to go hands-free, 609,000 views posted July 22nd. It's a lot of views quickly. And what you see in this is they're promoting the fact that you are triggering recording using your hand or uh, snapshots gestures that you're using gestures to interact but like you would look at that and say okay we've seen stuff like this why are you highlighting this as one of your first promotional uh, 15 second clips but uh I, i'm already speculating the reason which is this special functionality of the flip device which they're going to be upgrading and showcasing at this event which is the fact that it's one of the only phones that essentially has a built-in tripod because you can just sit it on a table with a camera facing you. Mm -hmm. Now you can use the gesture to go ahead and trigger the recording and do your flips and do your somersaults or whatever you might do as they show off in their sure. promo. I don't know what you do in your spare time, Will, but if you want to do somersaults in a special outfit, that's completely your business. It just That's just for you and your flip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I guess they're trying to uh, play up this use case, which at first seems kind of strange and not all that useful. But if they can illustrate enough ways that it could be useful to you, there's so many more people recording themselves now hmm. with the ticks and the talks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but they don't stop there. They actually give you another one here ready for the next small thing so they're playing up the scale so you have the girl walking down the street the ringing happens she checks all the big pockets it's like no no i remember it's in my smallest pocket which is on my boot now that's kind of fun and cool but it also gives me anxiety because you hear this thing ringing and you're like you're slapping all your pockets i feel like i'm gonna lose it now i'm like it's so small where am i gonna put it now uh -huh. you know you're not gonna lose your phone but uh, but they're playing up that too. So, so who have they targeted so far? Well, in those first two, well, it's flip buyers mm -hmm. and it's, uh, the action type. It's the active type first. Then second, it's like the stylish aspect because they play up the small scale doesn't interfere with the style. Look at the stylish fit over here. But she has so many pockets. Well, that's the point. Well, they're kind of, yeah. that's the, that's what they're saying they're, but she's not carrying a bag. She can fit it into that fashion. Sure, yeah. It's very important, Will. Oh, okay, yeah. It's not disrupting in any way, and uh, so much so that she doesn't even notice it. Mm -hmm. That's how non-undisruptive it happens to be. Right, right. Now, the next commercial is the one that I care about, which is ready for the attention. Because I was like, getting worried here. They're spending so much time on the damn flip device and not enough on the fold. And in this one, you can see everyone is captivated. I don't know. Maybe that isn't the fold. That could, that could be the flip as well. But anyway, the whole restaurant freezes. He's pouring the coffee out of uh, the Chemex, by the way. The nice looking cafe they have going on. Will, you would hang out in a place like that. But anyway, she folds it down and everybody asks a question that I've been faced with as I carry the folding around. Every, this is a real scenario. This happens to me. Not maybe not to the same same extent that the whole place shuts down and people are spilling <laughs> coffee and because the whole world is frozen. It's very over dramatized. It, there's some there. drama there, but it does happen that people are like, "Hey, uh, uh, what you got there? What was that? What did you fold? 
What are you? Did yeah. you just fold your phone? What happened? That does happen. So I don't know which one they're promoting there, but uh, hopefully it's the fold, get some attention, and not just the flip. We won't have to wait too long to find out. Mm. As mentioned, if you're interested, we'll probably do something here on his channel. Hopefully, hopefully live, uh, August 10th, 9 a.m. Fast approaching. We're folding and we're flipping. Uh, Twitter is. Uh, I, I'm upset with uh, Elon and also a dip in revenue. Uh, okay. Like a lot of social media companies, we talked recently about winter. Social oh, yeah, media that, winter, yeah. crypto winter, stock market winter, economic winter, political winter. All the winters. Uh, heat wave, not winter. No, That's happening too. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's a tough time for social media for a number of reasons. Obviously, economic downturn, but then also some of those recent developments with what Apple's doing, the privacy, and everyone's everyone's got all these uh, avenues, all these different blames going on. With Twitter, they can just blame Musk and say, hey, this has cost us a lot of money. It's bad news for us. Uh, the, the, the battle is ongoing. But advertising revenue in the meantime rose just 2% to $1.08 billion, which didn't meet Wall Street's expectations of 1.22 billion. And that's, I know it doesn't sound like much of a difference, but that matters to Wall Street. Well, it sure does. And a uh, few would know that as intimately as you do. And Mo. <laughs> Never mind, Mo. <laughs> Mo's on a different level with that. He's very concerned. He's yeah. listening from home right now. Get well soon, Mo. Yeah. Give him a get well soon, Will, because I know you feel so, somewhat yeah. responsible. So get better, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> shout out mo uh twitter is now in the unenviable position of convincing and advertisers that its ad business is solid regardless of how its court battle with musk ends it's such a tough spot for them because they're getting blasted in public big big ticket news uh elon saying you got all you guys got is bots over there <laughs> like, and then they have meetings with advertisers like no not bots not bots real people real people we promise don't listen to that musk guy and the advertiser like well i read the headlines show me the bots and they're like well we can't show you the bots we didn't show him the bots we're not going to show you the bots mm -hmm. so the people you know everybody's skeptical um Twitter said its net loss was 270 million dollars or 35 cents per share um, and then they talked about active users, 237.8 million, which also missed expectations of 238.7. And then they claimed their spam accounts and bot accounts represented fewer than 5%, which is a figure it has repeated since 2013. Like, if all your users go up, don't your bots go up too? What is this? They're locked at 5%? Do I sound like Elon right now? Mm. Probably what he's saying. So everything else goes up. Bots stay at five. Bots don't go down. Bots don't go up. They stay at five. Mm. No, you cannot see the books. <laughs> okay. No bot books for you. I'm no. going to buy Twitter. I want to. Listen, I don't know, guys. I don't know about all this. Uh, I don't know the reasoning, the motivations. I can speculate. You can speculate. You can read the lines. You can also read between the lines. It's completely up to you. Uh, but there's a lot of things going against Twitter at the moment. Mm. And it's not just Twitter they're going against. How about Snap? Snap, Snapchat, shares down 25%. Incredibly challenging conditions, according to Snap. Advertisers continue to face supply chain disruptions and labor shortages, and many others are contending with rising costs amid record inflation, which led to cutbacks in spending on advertising. Mm. Oh, is this going to be a topic for us for like a year now? Is that what we're going to talk about? They got the money. Maybe. I think there's more to the story, though, and I think that this Apple move is a big part to play because these companies relied big time on this targeting stuff, mm -hmm. and everybody opted out all at once when Apple put the deal in, and those that group, they were the spenders, and Zuckerberg's sitting there like, holy, where's my metaverse? And Snap guys like challenging times challenging conditions mm. even though their user base went up and when we talk mm. about user base how about this for a guy like you will who doesn't snap you got no you're doing no snapping 
Daily active users on Snapchat rose 18% year over year to 347 million, beating consensus estimates of 344. Users go up, revenue goes down. Mm. Advertisers, mm. challenging economic times. But let's uh, compare that to Twitter. And you, you say to yourself, well, Twitter feels like a big deal, doesn't it? 237 compared to 347. Mm. That's 100 million extra users over there on Snap. Wow. Snapping about. I never knew. You're in the wrong place, Will. Clearly. You best get snapped anyway. Um, obviously, other places like Google and YouTube and where we happen to be, a little bit different model. I got your data already. They don't necessarily need to dive right in or have Apple's approval, although I guess Apple users could restrict what Google's capable of, but chances are you have these other services anyways. You're on the Gmails. You have the YouTube account. You have your browsing history. They learn about you based on your behaviors. Mm. And the targeting is different. The content is different. Everything is different. Mm. Will it be immune uh, as far as the uh, crypto winters and such and the uh, advertising winter and the social media winter? I don't know. Will we be immune? I don't know. Oh. I'll say that. Will we continue to have <laughs> fancy sushi dinners? I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep working. No, we'll be. Listen, listen. With this community right here, we'll be all set. Okay. Good. No problemo. I got no concerns. Will. All right. There's only one community like this one. Yeah. Lou later community. Shout out to everybody over there. A uh, Yeezy Gap and Balenciaga made a mobile game to promote a new clothing line. An arcade game. I was playing this. You sent this link to me, so I'm like, okay, I'll play it. Uh, you dress up in all black. Mm -hmm. Whatever variety of all black you want, you can cover your whole face if you want mm -hmm. because you're a good uh, Balenciaga fan. You can pick whether you're going to be a male or female character. Uh, you can f uh, pick your skin tone. Okay. And then next thing you know, you're just sort of floating upwards and you... As you collide with doves, you gather more <laughs> speed upwards. Okay. But these uh, these oh. outfits are on sale, right? So it's not really a game. It's just like a character creation. Well, there it is a game. It keeps score. And it so happens in the web. Challenge? You can try it in the web browser. Yeah, you try to get as many doves as you can. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a meme. It's obviously kind of humorous and there's a joke aspect to it, but there's also serious music playing. And if you don't collide with enough doves, mm. you eventually start to fall down. And oh. if you, if you like in this case, oh, this is gonna, about to be game over here. No doves. I die. Oh, okay. And then so you get a, a game. yeah. And then you get a score. Um, it's kind of, I think it's meant to be like lo-fi, low-tech. But anyway, after the game is over, you click on a little button, like a shopping button, and then you end up seeing all these products for sale. Yeezy Gap Balenciaga Collection, where you can uh, spend $200 for the t-shirt or, or uh, $300 for the hoodie. And mm. definitely not Gap prices. Mm. More towards the luxury type of price points. Do you like the style? It's a lot of collaborations going on. I was just saying to you, because Yeezy is a brand in and of itself, and then yeah. the Gap collab, and then I just don't, once Balenciaga's involved, I just don't know what the Gap has to do with it at that point. Are they the ones manufacturing it? Like, I just get, it's, it's so many, it, it, it's like a music video featuring, featuring, featuring. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many designers you can have involved in the thing. Mm -hmm. Um... Like, who's doing what? It's all... Anyway, it's not the first time that a luxury brand has uh, created a game or tried to get into that realm. Uh, Balenciaga has partnered with Fortnite in the past, also made virtual clothes for Meta's Avatar store, and crafted a standalone game to debut a new collection. Brands like Burberry, Gucci, and Longchamp have also made similar moves. Uh, will you be buying these outfits, Will? Would you consider it to be your style? Yeah, I'll take them all. Okay. Good to hear. Glad we're on the same yeah. page there. 
Amazon is rolling out its first fleet of all electric delivery vans. And guess what? They have doors on them. And we were talking about heat waves and we we're talking about UPS and frequent stops. I don't think these trucks care. They're made by Rivian and they got all the tech. So you're damn right. They got to have some type of cooling going on. Mm. Not just that. I'm watching the clip and the guy uh, from, well, whatever this is, wlocks.com. Uh, I mean, like, it's a news affiliate. It's, like a, it's a local news affiliate. But it's like a rollout of all these vehicles. It's kind of a, it's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, no, they're definitely good looking as far as delivery vehicles go. And the guy gets in there and he says it's gonna, they're going to have heated and cooled seats and heated and cooled steering wheel. And I'm like, nice. I was like, wait a sec. I've never seen a cooled steering wheel. I've seen a heated steering wheel. I've seen cooled seats. I haven't. I don't know if he slipped up or if it actually has a cooled steering wheel, which would be very cool. Yeah, a cooled steering wheel would yeah, be cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, point being is there's a real uh, consideration, not just of the climate, like the global climate with the electric vehicle and the emissions and such, but also the inside climate of the vehicle for delivery drivers who are either cooking or freezing in there. Uh, plus. That. Two touchscreens. All types of tech in there. You don't have to reference your phone as much or yeah. any type of special delivery equipment. Like Everything's a, tied to the Amazon ecosystem. It says Amazon right delivery. on the steering yeah. wheel there. And so, yeah, you go from delivery to delivery. A lot of security features as well with like mm. forward collision and uh, cameras that are detecting <clears throat> potential problems out front of the vehicle because those are extra stress points for people who spend as many hours as these drivers do in here. I don't know how much of an extra nuisance with the charging and how that all will all be set up, but they're going to be deploying quite a few of these. And of course we know about the relationship between Bezos and Rivian. And this is just a connection of these brands and these companies. I mean, it's a huge contract for Rivian. Um, Amazon has a climate pledge to re reach net zero carbon by 2040, which you might be saying, uh, Amazon, a tech company, that should be sooner or something like that. But for them, it's got to be one of the toughest missions because of the nature of their business. And scale. Moving physical things around. Yeah. Um, Rivian vehicles are going to help meet that goal. They invested more than $1 billion in the company to make this custom fleet to their specification for their purposes. Uh, drivers will start and end their days at Amazon Fulfillment Centers, charging the vehicle overnight. For the next day's shift, no gas stops will be needed. A current cities that these are going to be rolled out in, Nashville, St. Louis, Dallas, Seattle, Chicago. There's a couple of others. He wants to see, Bezos, wants to see 100,000 of them on the road by the end of the decade. Uh, heated and cooled seats and steering wheels, exterior cameras, automatic emergency braking and collision warning technology. This can take a lot of stress off. Uh, 100 U.S. cities by the end of the year. Woo! That's big. That's big stuff, Will. I can see a lot of delivery drivers wanting to drive for them just so they get the nice truck and they're staying cool. Yeah. Right now, right about now. It's getting I mean, yeah. Shout out Amazon. Getting they're doing something right. Getting competitive out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other, you know, most of the Amazon stuff that I get at this point is like local courier stuff. It's not even a special truck. So I'm curious how they're going to balance that out. Mm. Part-time, full-time, all this stuff. It's uh, The driving thing is quite interesting. Okay, this is the last one. Kind of a little novel item that I think you're going to like, Will. Okay. Smart lock powered by NFC. And I'm not talking about wireless charging. I'm talking about... Powered from the small amount of energy output from NFC that you would typically use for payments. Uh. Providing enough power to push up uh, a padlock. Mm, so there's no battery in there. No. You don't have to charge it. No. Go ahead, Will. You love it. Yeah, this is very cool. So you just hold your phone up to it, and there's a little graphic showing you filling the necessary power. Boom. Unlocked. Lovely. Now. And it's like a size of a regular lock. Padlock, yeah. yeah. You would put on a locker or on That's a fence or, or something along these lines. I presume it could be a simpler contraption because, like you said, it wouldn't have such an, a need for uh, ports. I don't think it would have to have any ports on it. Mm. Now, maybe you would want a port as, like, a backup if for some reason this aspect failed. I don't know. Uh, this technology has been there for a minute, but this is a new chip 
called Infineon NAC1080, which now other lock makers can actually license and include in their products so that you can see this uh, feature roll out at a greater scale where you would see it show up in the hardware store and wherever else you would order or buy these things. A uh, nice little tap, Will. Yeah. Get your stuff unlocked. Uh, move on with your life. Now, granted, that lockpick guy on YouTube... Lockpicking lawyer. Lockpicking Shout lawyer is going to look at this. He's just going to point at it and it's going to get unlocked. Like he's just going to squeeze it and yeah. he's going to be like, uh, I do not recommend. Yeah. Uh, but that's the case. Convenience and security, they do not go hand in hand. Uh, you got to give something up to get something else. Just ask Apple, privacy, Mark Zuckerberg, so on and so forth. Thank you very much to everybody who joined here today. Thank you to Willie Do for staying five minutes late. Thank you to Mo, who couldn't be here with us today. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate everybody. And we, we especially appreciate you for joining us, given the fact that it's uh, we're bracing ourselves for social media winter. Yeah. It's and coming. we're going to need all the support we can get. Thank you very much. <laughs>